Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Samba in a Linux environment in order to develop on a Windows environment. This came up when a colleague of mine wanted to do some Docker work and the Docker hub or the Docker desktop for Windows, it didn't really work well when I tried to get a customer to use it and so on. And then I also got a comment from Araceli that the Docker desktop was not free anymore. So let's look over here to the user service agreement and it actually says that it remains free for small businesses fewer than 250 employers and less than 10 million in an animal revenue and for everyone above that it's five dollars per month so it's not free that's true um, but for smaller companies uh, like myself and where i work uh, it should be just fine but let's try to do this anyway we want to set up a samba relay to a desk uh, a virtual machine that we own and have on our computer and want to have a samba connection so we can edit files on that machine so let's see here we jump over to my samba machine and first off we install samba so just apt install samba should be available for um, the uh, most common uh, Linux distributions. There might be some very special edge cases where you don't have the Samba implemented. I don't know about Raspberry Pi, I haven't tried it there, but I think the packages is available there as well. It's a very common package and have been for many years. I believe I ran Samba back in the 90s the late 90s or 2000s on my linux machines back then so it has been around for a long time um, this takes a little while to set up but it's not that long so we will wait for this and then we will just configure it um, but the easiest way here is that we want to make a directory let's say samba share like that and then we uh, go into share and we touch a file this is my file like that and then we want to edit samba smb conf and smb is the actual um, service that is in windows so this file share service and then when they created Samba, they added some A's just so it would uh, sound better. But in this configuration file, we don't need to change anything. We just need to add a share definition. Let's see if I can copy paste that in. So we talk about this later. So this is my Samba share definition. I put it at the last part of this document here. And we have some name of this Samba share. So this is the name. And that's what we will use. It's very important. So this is WinShare. This is the name of my share. I This is a Samba on Debian. And then I point out the actual path that I created here, the share path. And I say that read only should be no, so I can actually change files in this path. I want it to be browsable, so I can actually see files in the path. And I want to be able to write files there as well. So all these are required in order to actually do changes to the path. You can also whitelist a bunch of uh, people that want, you want to have access. So some users have access and others don't. And when it comes to users, we actually need to create a new Samba user because those are not the same as your Linux users on this system they are separate in a separate database so let's create this user wooden here and we need to do that with sudo and then we will set up a new password here let's type in qwerty and so that's not a good password but it will suffice for this so now i added the user wooden so now i have a user and a share that i can actually connect to and in order to get all this working I will uh, run system control status of some uh, nmbd 
service. So this is the actual Samba de Demon. So it's called NM, uh, NMD, NMBD and that's the service. So let's restart that. And now we have all the configuration read in by the service. So let's jump over to my other uh, machine here. So this is a um, Windows 11 Docker, uh, Windows 11 virtual machine. And this is where I want to do my changes. So first off, I want to have a little bit of a rant of how Windows have changed over the years. So let's talk about the actual control panel and the different changes there. A very common thing that you do as a developer is adding paths and environment variables that should be globally available for all your tools. And in the beginning, like 95, Windows 95 or so, you had like five clicks in order to get to the place where you could add a path. And let's do that today. So we go in here and then we need to find settings. And when we have open settings there, so this application needs to load. And then we need to find, I believe, system and open that up. And here in system, I need to go down to about and open that up. And then here I need to figure out the uh, advanced system settings and there we have that menu and now we can go into environment variables and change those so that was about seven clicks or so they have changed this up which is pretty nice so it doesn't look really like Windows uh, 7 anymore but before you had these system preferences in your, your normal configurations you can just open system properties but now you need to dig down uh, deep dig down in the menus more and more in order to find it which is not something that i prefer so let's create this network share then and see how we do that and we go in here and we scroll down to network and when we open up this network tab here the first time i did this it actually had a little pop-up up here that said that the network share and printer share is not uh, enabled. Do you want to enable it? Click here. And I clicked it and it enabled print and file sharings on my Windows machine. And I understand that you don't want that enabled because of uh, uh, both performance and also security. You don't really want to have extra services running if you don't going to use them. And then I right click on network here and then I can open this, open this in a new window. That could be something that I do once every blue moon and I can pin it to quick access. That's also something I can do every one every full moon, pin to start, maybe do that once. And properties, I don't ever, I, I think never have I ever looked at the network properties here. But they seem to be pretty good, actually. Uh, I would have gone through the control panel instead, but here we have access to doing that kind of configuration. So that's good. But these are not really the best options for this. But the, then we have show more options and we get like one extra option here or two extra options. So we get map network drive and disconnect network drive. And I think those are the most commonly used. I don't understand why they are under show more options. So here I can create a new network drive. Let's create W for instance. And then I will type in the uh, type in backslash backslash the IP of the machine I want to connect to. In this case, this was number 35 in my network. And then I type in win share after another backslash. And backslash is important in Windows. In Linux, we use forward slash for everything. In Windows, you use backslash for some things, but not everything. So some things in Windows needs backslash and URLs to network resources are one of those things that needs backslash. And then I don't want to reconnect on Shining. You can click that, but 
connect with the different users uh, with different credentials is important that you click in. Otherwise it will use the credentials that you use when you log into your Windows system. And that's not what you want to do here because those credentials are probably different from what you created in your Linux environment. So it tries to connect here. And when it's done that, yeah, I can supply my username and then I type in, let's see here, Kvarti. So I have those and I can remember those credentials if I like, or I can type them again later on. And then again, it asks another time for my password, remember the credentials, and then we have corrected it. So now I have my file here and I can create a new file or create a new folder, for instance. Testing, let's see, we save that and that worked just fine. If we go back to the, uh, uh, let's jump out here and go back to my Samba share here and I will look here and see, we have the director of testing here. So I can now edit files, create files, create directories on this Samba share in my Windows environment, but I have them available in my Linux environment as well. So I can do my development work on a Windows environment where I might be more comfortable and then have my services run on a Linux environment. Another thing I want to mention when it comes to the connection between Windows and Samba is your firewall. And that is something that is not commonly installed, but when you install Linux, you might be tempted to install a firewall as well. And if you have done that and it's a local environment and you don't need a firewall, which well, is something that you want to turn off, there is a, comp uh, a couple of commands in order to do that. Remember, this is not preferable if you have this machine online, so never do that online. But if you have something, uh, have a command called IP tables, which you will have if you have a firewall, pretty much. And if you run dash L, you will list everything that is in there. And if there isn't really anything defined, you see three levels, you see something that is inbound, forwarded traffic and outbound traffic. And if all of those don't have any rules, then you're just fine. But if you have a bunch of rules there and you can't connect with your Shamba share, then turning them off is not that hard either. So you can just say that all traffic on input, forward and outbound should be accepted as is and just send them through. This means that you will totally turn off the firewall. So if you need the firewall, don't do this. And then you have to flush the settings out so you remove all the other old rules. And then you can also run X in order to remove any change that uh, in this case, when you have input, output and uh, forward, you can actually build chains of different chains of different uh, trust models. So you can say when something comes inbound and it, the traffic looks like this, then send it over to this chain in order to evaluate if I should let it through or not. And by running X, you will remove all those extra chains as well. So you will set everything as allowed, remove all the extra rules and flush everything out. So this is a way to update your firewalls, you don't have any firewalls rules and the Samba share will work just fine. There is probably a lot of guides out there how to set up firewall rules to allow Samba traffic. But if you're a developer, you're running a virtual machine and we just want to connect, then you don't really need a firewall. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section. And I really hope to see you in the next video.